Hi, Professor Gerald Friedman, University of Massachusetts at Amherst again, and we're talking about wealth and happiness. Um, the orthodox view and <laughs> the real world. I hate to say that, real world, but okay. Orthodox econ economists, neoclassical economists, have a very simple model of happiness. And the model rest like this. Toys equals happiness. More toys equals more happiness. The more you have, the happier you'll be. This comes from you know, the simple Robinson Crusoe model of people. Robinson Crusoe, the more stuff he had, the happier he was going to be. He made the stuff himself. If he didn't want it, he wouldn't have made it. If he had two canoes, it must be because he wanted two canoes since he had to make the second canoe. So two canoes must be happier than with one canoe. Three canoes, he'd be happier still. Um, at worst, if he didn't like something, if he made a mistake and made a fourth canoe and found, oh, I don't really have any place for it, he'd just leave it, burn it, throw it away, dispose of it. More stuff is more happy. Um, now, from this, you expect Americans should be very happy. Uh, per capita income, the average amount of stuff that we have, has grown by about 2% a year for 200 years. So the amount of stuff we have doubles every 35 years. Nowadays, we have about $30,000 worth of stuff per person compared to about $100 worth of stuff in 1790. We must be happy, right? Um, Robinson Crusoe would have been happy, all this stuff. And if you look within countries, you do surveys of happiness within countries, rich people are happier than poor people. Surprise, surprise. Paris Hilton, with her $600 million, is happier than um, Lindsay Lohan, who has, I don't know, 20 million. Um, and she's probably happier than Dan, the videographer, who has, I don't know, $150, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, um, and a coffee cart, you know, for people's market. You know, people with more money within any country are happier. But then there's a problem. And this problem was discovered by an economist at the University of Southern California, Richard Easterlin, um, about 40 years ago. And since then, it's been called the Easterlin Paradox. And it's been checked and tested by lots of people. Over time, there's no increase in happiness in advanced capitalist countries. Americans are um, almost four times as wealthy as we were right after World War II, but we're no happier. The same for the Europeans, and most amazingly, the same for the Japanese, who are actually a little less happy than they were right after World War II, when they were devastated and starving. What's been going on? Why hasn't happiness increased with increasing wealth over time? Um, and this shows up across the world. If we can erase this for a second, um, I'll quickly draw you a generalized graph of survey data for different countries. Down here is average income. So here's $35,000 per person, the US. Here's $100 for Cameroon, um, and here's happiness. This is what it looks like. Over here, you have an income level of about $10,000 per person, which is about what the United States was after World War II. Beyond that point, you don't get any more happiness. I mean, some countries are less happy, Russia, 
Some countries are more happy. Um, Finland. Here's the US, just about on the line. Here's Cameroon. And here's Haiti. I mean, these are poor countries. For them to get a little more wealth, yes, they get happier. They start getting clean water. They get antibiotics. They get enough to eat. They get a change of clothes. Um, and going up to about $10,000, yes, people do get happier. Beyond that, no. Extra wealth beyond $10,000 or so per person in a society does not lead to greater happiness for the society as a whole. Why not? I mean, we could think about various reasons, and you can think about them within your own lives. Um, what really makes you happy? Once you have a warm place to sleep, can take a shower, have hot water, enough to eat, some change of clothes. What makes you happy is your social life, your relations with other people, having friends. More goods crowds out social relations. Um, there's some, I'm not sure how this was, I don't remember how this was recorded, but I believe it was Paris Hilton on some video having sex with somebody on the internet stop to answer the telephone. That kind of thing can really ruin your social life, at least with that person. Um, goods crowds out your social life because you have to take your car in to be repaired. You have to you know, fuss with your computer. You have to update your internet. You have to do this, that, whatever. All instead of spending time with people you care about or might come to care about. Second, what really makes us happy, and this sounds bad, but there's a lot of truth to it. Why do you like the Lexus you just bought? Because you drive it into your driveway and you see the looks on your neighbors. They are impressed. You want more so you can show everyone else what a success you are. And you can feel like a success because you have more than they do. If we all have more, none of us are benefiting. Make everybody taller, and the NBA has taller players, but nobody gets an advantage. If everybody has a BMW, then nobody is impressing anybody else. It's just everybody's running harder to get to that BMW instead of spending their time socializing with other people. Um, why doesn't money make you happier as a society? Third reason, because more stuff creates more problems for everybody. If everybody has one car, driving around is hard. Everybody has two cars, every family has three cars. Traffic, pollution, noise. We get the, all the external course of our stuff. Yeah. Um, what we really want is to have good relationships with other people. Money doesn't do anything for that as a society, as a whole. So more GDP, more production, more stuff. It hasn't been a good way to increase happiness as a whole. On that kind of depressing note, but not necessarily depressing because we can think of it as an opportunity to change our ways and get something out of it. Um, I leave you. Have a good day. Thank you.